Hello and welcome to week four of CIS 121. This is just a short screencast to help you get started on assignment number four. Part of assignment number four is to create a simple JavaScript program from scratch. Read through the assignments carefully and you'll find yourself at a flowchart for a JavaScript loop. This is a very low-level flowchart, and you should be able to create your code directly from this flowchart. The assignment also gives you some guidelines for what your program should include. A document.write statement, a loop, variables called n, and a variable called sum. And more than anything else, it requires you to create this output. When we grade your assignment, we'll look for this, this kind of output. We don't want you to use the words Stu and Dent. We want you to use your name. Now I'm going to write a simple little program that is very similar to this, but it's not exactly the same. Work through this with me, and you'll get a chance to get a quick start on your homework. The tool we're going to use to write JavaScript is something called JSBin, JSBin.com. This is in your materials. Go to JSBin.com and click on the New command, and you'll notice that it gives you an ability to edit HTML and immediately see the output. I have turned off Auto Run JavaScript, and I'm going to use this button to run the code as I develop it. Note, this is HTML5. This is not what you need to produce. This code won't validate and doesn't have the right doc type and the other things we use in our course. But it's simple enough that you can see what we're talking about and you can get started with coding your JavaScript. JavaScript lives inside a script container. Notice that I create the open and the close tag, and then I fill in the contents. The instructions say to use a document.write document .write command. So this is what that is. Again, Notice that I make the open and the close parentheses, and then I go back into the middle and I fill them in. Document.write takes a string argument, or it converts its arguments to a string, and then outputs that to the browser document. Let's write a string. Again, notice I create the open and the closing quote marks at the same time. My string says, Elmo starting. Everything looks good. Now I'm going to click the Run with JS button. And just like a browser, JS bin outputs the contents of that string. When you're done creating your script, you can take this code, modify it to be XHTML, and copy and paste it into your editor so you can put it in the appropriate file as directed by the instructions. So let's, let's declare a variable, var n equals zero. Notice that this line is exactly the same as the flowchart, n equals zero. Notice that the flowchart also wants you to create a variable called sum and set it to zero. In JavaScript, you use this notation the same way as you did before. Sum equals zero. The JavaScript flowchart has you write your name before you begin the loop. So that means our loop should go here. You have a number of options open to you on how to do loops. You can use an until loop, you can use a for loop, 
or you can use a while loop. Depending on which loop you choose, it may not exactly match your flowchart, but that's okay. I'm going to use a while loop. So a while loop looks like this. While, and then there's a Boolean condition, and then there's a block of code. That's what a while loop looks like. That's the while statement. Now let's fill in the parts. Let's open it up. And what do we need to put inside the loop? Well, inside the loop we need to have a statement that says n equals n plus 1. We need a statement that says sum equals sum plus n. We have to write out n. We have to write out sum. I'm going to write out just this first part. So my statement says n equals n plus 1. In this class, every line gets a semicolon as a statement separator at the end of the line. The flowchart says we need to add a right n. Okay, so let's do that. How do we write stuff? Document dot write. And we're just going to put out n. Now notice I did not enclose it in a string. JavaScript is smart enough to take this number and convert it to a string so it can output it. Let's run this. What happens? Nothing. That's because there's a bug in this code. If you're reading ahead, you can see that there's no conditional statement in the while loop. But bugs happen all the time. So let's see what's wrong with this loop. I'm going to copy that. And now I'm going to a website called JSHint. JSHint.com. As it reads here, it's a tool that detects problems in JavaScript. It's like the HTML and CSS validators. You paste your code in here and you click on the lint button and it picks the problems off your code. There are lots of options and I would recommend that you turn the browser on the assumptions and turn off this thing about eval. And if there's any other things in here about white space or any of that stuff, turn that off. These are a good set of options to start with. So I'm going to plug in my while loop. And I'm going to, oh, it's probably going to want me to declare var n equals 0. That's another chunk of code that I'm going to need to use because I call it out here. I might as well declare it. Now I'm going to click lint. And it says it's found problems. Let's see the detailed report. Now here is our error. Line 5. It expected an identifier and instead saw the closing paragraph. What does that mean? It means there's something missing right in here. So you need to go look at the while statement in w3schools.com and learn how to use the while statement to make your loop. Now, just like the validator, the first error is pretty useful, even though it doesn't exactly tell you what you're supposed to do to fix it. But notice, as you go further down the list, they get crazier and crazier. By the time you're to the bottom, it's saying it's looking for something called end, which you don't need at all. Just like the validator, work on the first error first and see if you can fix that. So, as you know, if you've got a while loop, you need to test and say while n is less than 5. Now let's try this again. This is our conditional statement. While less is less than 5, keep going through our loop. Let's run lint. Good job! JSHint hasn't found any problems with your code. 
So let's take this fix and let's bring it back to JS bin and put it in our code. Let's run the code to see if it works. And sure enough, it does. Elmo starting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now this isn't the kind of output we want, and this brings up an important point. You are writing to a web browser, so you should write legal HTML. Well, to make this legal, I have to give it some HTML tags, and I put them inside the string with the other information. And if I'm going to write n out, I'm going to add a br tag. Now watch this. I write n, and that converts the number n to a string. But I want to put a break tag at the end of the string, so I use the JavaScript concatenation operator. It looks like a plus sign. And I add another string that has the break tag in it. Let's run this. Oh, now we're starting to get close. From here, you know that you have to take the rest of the flowchart. Sum equals sum plus n, and then write sum. And you're going to need to write a colon in between the two. So you're going to need to write a colon, and then the value of sum, and then that line break. So start with this code, and see what you can do with it. You'll probably have to add another statement in here, where you set sum equal to something, and then you'll probably have to set another document.write in here. Okay, that's it for now. Just as a reminder, when you're working on Assignment 4, make it easy on yourself and develop your program step by step, one line at a time, using JSBin. And if you run into trouble where it stops working and JavaScript will stop working completely if there's ever a problem, then take your code and check it with JS hint. That will give you, as it says, a hint as to what's going wrong. It'll also complain about a lot of other stuff that may or may not be helpful. Thanks for watching.